Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We, we have a very sensitive, delicate topic tonight, a very important one, and I'm thrilled to finally have a show like this. It's late November now, um, and Halloween and so on are past, but many of us still get requests for help from those affected by occult, cult, or satanic ritual abuse. And... Jesus can heal people from anything. And really, we, it's going to be a, an interesting show because we have Michael Norton and his his ministry is a healing ministry to people affected by these things. And he has a website and um, he'll mention that at the end. I've not had a chance to look at it yet or um, his information, but we had a little chat on Facebook and um, I, I think this show will be beneficial. So it's time now to, to welcome Michael Norton to the show. Hello, Michael. Hello, Laura. How are you? Oh, doing pretty good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. This is going to be a great topic. Well, thank, thanks so much for, um, for, for coming mm-hmm. on the show. And um, you're in America? Yes, I am. I'm in California. California. And what's the weather like there? It's actually s- starting to get cold. Last week we had our autumn. It lasted for a whole week, and it got cold. You know, it got all the way down to 40 degrees here, so we're freezing. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's getting kind of cold here, too. We, yeah. had, we had snow in Scotland just for about a day. Um, wow. And we've had a bit of frost, but um, back to the normal rain. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before before um, I ask you questions, Michael, I thought I would just say my very basic understanding of, of this topic Um you know, at a very, very basic level. And I guess if someone said to me, well, what is ritual abuse? I might say it's it's often uh, linked to an ideology or a belief system of a group where there is mind control going on. There is, um, you could say, program- programming people mm-hmm. to obey it and propaganda of the group's um, beliefs. And... Um, I know that some people say, well, does that really, how can that really work and how does that really go on? Well, and I think, well, even think of a, you know, a, a stage hypnotist show, you know, that they can, they can take someone from the audience, get them on the platform, hypnotize the person, you know, and they'll do things that they can't remember that they did. And sometimes I do hear um, from people who have been through this type of um, abuse and they will say it, it, it can be like that. It's almost like they've got multiple personalities. Sometimes they'll tell me um, during the day they have a certain life they get on with, but at night time it's almost like as if another part of their another personality takes over and they're aware that they have engaged in rituals um, or, or perhaps they find bruises on their body um, and they, they realise something has happened. So it's it's not so crazy to believe that, th- that this is really, really possible. And plus I thought, you know, even mental health professionals, journals of psychiatry, for example, they recognize what they might class as multiple personality disorder. Um, movies have been based on it, like The Three Faces of Eve in the 50s or Sybil in the 70s. Now, obviously, this topic is a much deeper level than that. That's just a very basic, basic understanding of it. So, you know, that's my very basic understanding. What what would you describe? What is ritual abuse? Ritual abuse is kind of hard to wrap around a package. We used to always call it satanic ritual abuse, mm-hmm. but we expanded the definition to just be ritual abuse because we've seen satanic ritual abuse, secret society ritual abuse, which includes Freemasonry, Rosicrucian, other things, and we've also seen like cult um, Christian ritual abuse, or simple just ritual doctrinal programming that slips in like programming. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, ritual abuse as we see it 
Um, it's a systematic form of abuse that is orchestrated for a covert purpose. It ultimately serves an agenda of darkness. And usually the people are affected by ritual abuse are typically, I call it incestual for two reasons. One, it goes through generations of covens that go back for several hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And these families don't always, like you said, understand they're participating in this. Mm -hmm. um, they have like what's called a day host and a night host like you, you alluded to. Mm -hmm. That the day host goes about their daily, whatever they do during the day, the best next door neighbor ever or whatever, you know, makes pies for you, hangs out with you. But you know there's something kind of quirky with them, and they know there's something kind of quirky, and they don't understand what it is. And then at nighttime, or when the sun goes down sometimes, the night host will come in and start prepping their mind and bringing in the other identity, which you call the personality, to start prepping them for rituals. Mm -hmm. So there's like multiple people inside here that are programmed to take certain tasks and do these things. But like I said, the, the, the thing of programming is as an overall agenda to serve darkness, mm -hmm. usually satanic ritual abuse. said Christian cults there because I've I've been a Christian now 20 years and I have come across that uh, mm -hmm. to, to various levels and, and some of it yes you know I, I would say I, I believe is um, the leaders do have um, bad motives but mm -hmm. many times I, I think it's, it's just you know that the, the, the leaders don't have bad motives that they're, they're just um They've got off track, obviously, and, and they've become very controlling. Um, exactly. It's certainly not healthy, and it's certainly not God's will. Um, you know, for the people, you got a little Sorry. dog here. Sorry, I had a dog here. <laughs> uh, what kind of dog is it? Yeah, it's a Doberman. Is it? Oh, gosh, it's yeah. like a little dog. <laughs> there, was, there was a little dog there, too. She's the mean one. <laughs> the Doberman hides behind her. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yep, she was asleep on there, so we must walk by the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, mm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And, and, you know, I've known people that have came out of, of Christian um, cults or controlling Christian mm. places, and, yeah, it's, um, they do need healing for that, mm. obviously. Um, and I see that quite a bit, too. It's common here. It's just mm. we don't think, well, how can a Christian cult be that way they don't they're not like you said they're not established to be a cult a lot of times they, they're just very doctrinal in their ways mm -hmm. um like i had one young woman i'm working with right now she's suffering dissociative identity disorder which we call multiple personalities mm -hmm. but hers came from emotional abuse as a child mm -hmm. you know her father's always yelling her fat you're ugly that sort of thing mm -hmm. and it stuck with her and it just it was from her father was a drunk and it just the abuse was constant so she split into identities now when she went off to college, she went to a, 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 one of these um, high-end Christian colleges over here in America, but it was very doctrinal. Mm -hmm. And since she was suffering from a depression from her DID, you know, the school kept saying, well, it's a sin to have depression, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a subtle form of programming that got into the DID, too. Mm -hmm. We're starting to unravel, and it caused almost like a PTSD in the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. And, and yeah, I, I guess that, that a lot of these Christian uh, churches, they're not trying to be that way. Um, they're not trying to be evil at all. But they're just, right. You know, they get controlling, they get legalistic, and yeah, it does, it does create great problems. Mm -hmm. um, so can you share examples of, I think you mentioned there Freemasonry, can you share examples of the types of groups who use ritual abuse? Okay, so that often? what we see quite frequently is the Freemasons and the, the Rosicrucians. Also the Illuminati, um, but I throw them back more on the satanic ritual abuse side because their stuff's very dark. However, what is interesting is we go higher in the levels of the secret societies. They start mirroring the stuff of the Illuminati and the stuff of the, 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 the covens and the ritual abuse. They actually go satanic mm -hmm. in their rituals. Um, and like the Rosicrucians, the Illuminati copy a lot of ancient Egyptian rituals, which is interesting, mm -hmm. you know? They don't usually focus on the pentagram. Those things are there, but they'll go back and use other symbols like Satan used back with the Egyptians mm -hmm. for the rituals. And I've seen them cross over between the Illuminati and the Rosicrucians. They're sort of the same symbols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I saw that too. And, um, you know, even w whatever type of belief system it is, even with whether it's pagan or, or Nazism or whatever, that you know, there, there, there does tend to be that overlap. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I've, I've heard of, of women who were in um, cults who there was a very strong Freemasonry element to it, but mm -hmm. also a satanic element to it or Illuminati 
element. And yep. Yeah, and, and they would often have similar, even at um, cults or occult um, situations where the people will say to me, I don't even, I can't even describe to you what, you know, the group is as such. Exactly. And yet they do do have these rituals. So, yeah, it's just like there is that overlap. And I guess that's... Um, and you hit something there too. What we see is like a fingerprint of it. Um, a lot of people saying, "Well, can you prove satanic ritual abuse?" I can't. Well, actually, I can now. I kind of know where they're at. <laughs> I don't go after them mm-hmm. because of, the, like I said, it's incestual. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the the, the 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 daughters just want out of the family, or the sons just want out of the family. Mm-hmm. They don't want to prosecute mom and dad mm-hmm. because they know they're programmed too. Mm-hmm. So I know where these spots exist, where these places exist, but. Um, we can't really put a fingerprint on them now. Like, well, as we see the fingerprint, we can't really place the crime on them and prove they exist. But what I do see exist is from the counseling sessions because to me, I want them to prove to me first and foremost they are ritual abused. And so I listen to their story. And when we start hearing the rituals and how they take place and what's going on and the imagery, a lot of times I'll have like multiple identity people who are like four years old or something that happened to draw me sketches of the same thing. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what kind of gives me evidence. Yeah, this is real, whatever's happening to them because yeah. they're sharing the same thing. Just before I, I forget, um, I mentioned at the start of the show, you know, that Halloween's just passed. Um, do you notice that, that ritual abuse tends to occur? Yeah, we know it happens all, all through the mm-hmm. year, but, but do you mm-hmm. notice it tends to occur more commonly on certain dates like um, Halloween, Samhain, even Christmas, Easter? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, usually from in summertime, we see the phases of the moon. We get a lot of stuff with them, you know. Um, the ritual parts, we call them um, occult loyal parts, may be triggered, which is identity that's triggered to participate in a ritual, and they'll come up and be more agitated. Halloween's really bad because we all feel it. Um, it's just, you know, you feel whatever is going on. It's like one of their big ritual holidays, and it kind of shuts down like the first week after Halloween, and it ramps back up again for Christmas, and then the next big one after that's Easter. So, this, especially with satanic ritual abuse, they um, lo- follow a lot of the Christian holidays. Um, which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So we'll see a lot of stuff ramp up, like you said, Easter too. They want to um, do whatever they do that just mocks Jesus on his holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I just did, a, I did a, a show on Revelation TV live on, on Halloween, and we were discussing that. that um, it's interesting, in the month of October, there is a lot of um, occult things going on, a lot of demonic things going on. Mm-hmm whether it's related to Halloween itself or, or so when all around the world that there are different festivals, Days of the Dead, you know, on every continent. Um, yep. Variations of it and, and people everywhere in October trying to contact the dead and it just seems to be a month where um, it is really quite... Uh, yes, it feeds, I, I call it feeds it, it generates the energy, the spiritual energy. Mm-hmm. And it seems that, like, I, well, to me, I call it agitating because it's darkness. But it seems that the darkness seems to like that energy that comes off from that, you know, mm-hmm. of, you know, giving the dead acknowledgement, which isn't the dead, it's the demonic. Mm-hmm. And especially Halloween, too, when we start putting our decorations out, they're kind of scary. We go darker and darker each year, mm-hmm. the celebration. And it just feeds into that demonic realm, too. Mm-hmm. That just gives them energy for it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's why, you, you know, you will get people like channelers or mediums saying, Halloween's a great time to, to contact <laughs> the dead because the, the, the veil is so thin. And I think, exactly. oh, oh gosh, yeah, it's so thin because all this demonic, there are sacrifices happening, there are murders taking place. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, the, the demonic energy is just through the roof. Um, but, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of mention that because we've just passed Halloween. Um, and it was interesting what you were saying about generational because I know it's not always the case, but, but sometimes that people contact me where it has been, um, and I remember, it must have been about 15 years ago, I was in church where a woman came, um, she was a, a, a Satanist, and, and it, it ran her family down both generations for 500 years, Yep. Um, and she came to, to try to cause trouble, but of course, um, she actually found Jesus Christ <laughs> as her saviour. <laughs> yep. And he always works first through, yep. <laughs> and uh, you know, the the church helped her and, and she got out of the got out of, right. the, of the coven. Um so, you know, some people might say, Well, hmm, not so sure I can still believe it and you know, why do so few few people believe 
these accounts. I'm thinking one, it's probably because it's kept secret, um, mm-hmm. or you know they're threatened by by the the group to not. Why is it that that people today just don't want to? Is it maybe fear as well, public denial? I think there's fear too. Um, the women I work with are are some of the most incredible um, Christian women I've ever met. A lot of them, as they got healed more, became some of our intercessors, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Um, so we trust them. Mm-hmm. But I think, too, is we try to protect who they are and who they are in jobs. These are teachers, people functioning society. And they don't want this getting out because people may look at them the wrong way. Mm-hmm. While they have multiple identities, something's wrong with them. Mm-hmm. No, they weren't born that way. It was a violation done to them. So a lot of times we protect them, and we, what we want to do is when they're better, let them tell their story. As it gets out, but a lot of times, once it gets out, either the person gets ridiculed, mm-hmm. or the story isn't told right, or something happens. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, the occult is vehemently denying this exists, and we know it exists because we're getting the people we're rescuing out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, yeah, I've, I've noticed people who, who Jesus has healed from this. They they do become very strong spiritual warriors mm-hmm. uh, for God, and um, you know they just they they, they end up. They just love Christ so much because they've had to um, get mm-hmm. close to him because of what they've been through. Uh, and yep. I've noticed that, in fact, they, they have a very strong, intimate relationship with, with Jesus that I think makes the rest of us Christians a bit jealous. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> because yep. they just get so close to him. Spiritually, mm-hmm. they, are so, they end up so tuned in. And yeah, they, they become great warriors and able to help um, mm-hmm. others who've been through the same um and yeah i think i can imagine many people do and some people of course will testify anonymously they maybe go on youtube and, and share anonymously but if, if if they can't even show their face um they yeah. have to wear a disguise then of course the public might just say oh that's just an actor or so it's nope. it a difficult one yeah. i actually um like the ones that try to hide their faces, I kind of believe them because they want to go on with their lives, but they want to get their message out. Mm -hmm. But there's some YouTube ones out there saying, you know, I was like, you know, such and such as um, satanic ritual abuse slave for a government official or something. It's like, I don't believe them. I think they're either making money off their video because quite frankly, if it's something that high up, they wouldn't be alive and they wouldn't be sharing that message. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of protection we provide too until we get people out of them Mm -hmm. because we have to separate people from the occult and their family. Um, and if they put a message out like that, you know, the occult's not going to allow them to live. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, it, it, you have to weigh it. It's a big rabbit trail, and especially yeah. on YouTube, wherever else, the Illuminati and all these other people. I just, I just work with the people in front of me and healing them. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm, I'm personally in, in two minds about that. Sometimes I think, okay, maybe the person um, is making it up, but I also think that if everyone who escaped um, mm-hmm. shared their story, was then suddenly. Um, found dead, it, it, it would kind of yep. be too obvious that, that they had mm. been killed, and therefore mm. I think that <laughs> the, the cults let them get away with it because they just know yep. it's too obvious. But yeah, I guess it could be a bit of both. But, and from my perspective, too, as a counselor, why I don't believe it is um, because they'd be triggering. If they're trying to tell their story, it takes a long time to heal these people. I never really said how they were healed or how they got healed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes Jesus to heal these parts. And if they start telling a story and they're not healed yet, other parts called perpetrating parts will come in and shut them down. Mm. And they'll start doing this weird eye twitching or something or, you know, like somebody else is coming up. You'll see it and they won't be able to get through their sentences because somebody else is going to stop them. Mm. So that's kind of like the stuff I'm looking for when I watch these videos. Like, well, she kind of made it completely through. Mm -hmm. So it's either being fabricated for, you know, getting attention or something else because you can see these triggering happening Mm -hmm. when people try to tell their story. Because a lot of my women who are fully or nearly fully healed still trigger on some things, you know. Mm -hmm. We haven't got all this stuff out. It takes like it takes years and years of healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so so sad. But yeah, and I know Mm -hmm. that um, I keep saying the name Jesus and I'm trying not to because sometimes even that can trigger them and we should perhaps say um, his Aramaic name instead. Mm-hmm. Or the Lamb of God, or because mm-hmm. even that His name can can trigger them. Can you explain yep. that? Why that is? Well, a lot of it is because most of the satanic ritual abuse and these things come from the the Catholic Bible. They've gone through the Catholic Bible and just programmed them against the names in there. Mm-hmm. However, what I found out is when I can teach these people to connect with Jesus, they can connect with Jesus. And a lot of times, since these women have been violated as a child, mm-hmm. they want justice. They don't want it's interesting. They don't want the justice that, that I mean, the Jesus that's smiling and walking through the streets. So what, a lot of times what shows up in them is, is just amazing is the line of Judah. Wow. 
and usually so because the the enemy can't taint that one. That's a warrior version of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing. We see that time and time again. Uh, the line of Judah comes in, and they hold on to him while they're they're walking out all this demonic stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that's that's really powerful, isn't it? Yeah, you can mm-hmm. see why that that name of, of his really is is effective for them. Um. So yeah, I forgot to mention a little bit. Ask you a little bit about um. You know some of the other symptoms that you might spot in in someone, like maybe phobias of, um, mm-hmm. like for instance, some people tell me they have a phobia of Halloween paraphernalia, mm-hmm. um, and they hate it every Halloween, uh, when that comes along. Um, so it's so good when these people contact me to refer them on to people like yourself, and then right. realize that their healing process will now will now mm-hmm. begin. So yeah, that that kind of is there any kind of signs in particular, or does it just range? Usually, seen? they kind of know something's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time I get them, they'll sometimes I catch them through deliverance ministry because they say they're hearing voices, mm-hmm. and it takes a deliverance minister with discernment to determine whether this is demonic or these are internal voices. And by internal voices, I usually nail it down to: Do you have like loud thoughts inside your head that never shut off? Mm-hmm. It's like a committee in there. Mm-hmm. And they go, well, yeah. And I said, uh, you know, and sometimes they can be saying negative things. They can be sounding like demons because, you know, it came from ritual abuse. So we have to discern and find, figure out what this is. A lot of times I'll just do prayers under my breath that provoke demonic. And I, and I see nothing happening in front of me. Mm-hmm. Then I'll say it out loud and they'll, they'll, they'll react and I'll calm them down. And I'll pray under my breath again, something that will provoke a demon. Nothing happens. It's like, okay, we got something going on here that maybe, you know, they've been delivered so many times they think it's demonic. So we'll work with them from there. Mm-hmm. And then the next stage is... Um, once we're able to sit them down and convince them it's not demonic, then we have to work with them on how do we connect to these voices so we can start healing them. And a lot of times the voices just want to jump forward and get healed. Some don't. Some want to shut it down. But the, 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 the parts inside do know something's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I guess some people might be listening to this and, and thinking, well, is that not just you know PTSD? Um, how can you... It, it can be. Um, a lot of these survivors are PTSD because the way they were programmed was through severe trauma. Um, they were tortured. I, you know, they were raped as children. We're dealing with children here. We're not dealing with adults now. You can't program the adult like this. Um, it was through severe trauma of a child because severe trauma generates energy for the demon to come. And it's, it's, like I said, it's this trauma that brings this stuff in. And so there's PTSD because we're thinking very bad trauma to a child. Mm-hmm. This is the worst thing. This is pure evil that was done. Mm-hmm. They were drowned. They were electrocuted. They were beaten. Mm-hmm. Um, in cases where it was incestual, I have children who show me pictures all through their childhood where they have bruises all over them. Mm-hmm. Everyone every picture is a weird bruise, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's, it's just stuff like how do they program them? Well, they may have them in a ritual situation where they have a false Jesus dressed up. Mm-hmm. And they're torturing them. So they will call out to Jesus; He'll help you. When they do, they'll go punch him in the face. You know, and they call. They tell them to call out Jesus again. They punch him in the face. So now they have this trigger reaction. Mm-hmm. Later on, when they read the Bible, that they're in pain, like they're being punched in the face. It's triggering again. Mm-hmm. And that's how this stuff's reinforced. Mm-hmm. Um, so this stuff is real. It does happen, and that's what we have to walk these these parts through. That that know that, that there was a false Jesus there, and this isn't. We'll introduce you to the real Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a process of evangelizing each part. As I say, I've been a Christian 20 years now, but I remember when I first came out of um, the occult, and I hadn't been abused as such, not not at all, but um, Mm. I obviously had a false Jesus that I'd been taught by Mm -hmm. New Agers and and mediums. And so when I was having um, one of my early deliverances, I actually felt, um, it's hard to describe, it wasn't a vision, but I just had a strong impression when the deliverance ministers were praying with me, that yes. uh, Jesus um, was oh, like a, a vampire or something like that. He had fans mm-hmm. and he just wanted to mm-hmm. uh, bite me and, and kill me. And it was just kind of weird. But yeah, that obviously that's what, what was what was going on um, there. I just had that uh, false Jesus that I'd been taught. And um, I think as well, you know, when people, especially if there's siblings involved and, and they will all... Um, tell the, the same account, then it can't just be, oh well, that one person's making it up or whatever. If there's other people who can corroborate the, the evidence, um, right. which often they do in, in families, then, then they know that this is this is very real. 
Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's why we have to separate them from the families. Um, people think it's kind of strange because if it's if it's incestual, um, mom who just wants to be mom, day mom over the phone, who loves her child, a part in the back is say a trigger word that just sends instructions or does something else to trigger mm-hmm. another part across the phone. So like you said, we do have to separate these people when they do this while getting healed. And let them determine at the point maybe years down the road what they want to do. But I say even the parents don't know it. Well, they kind of do as they get old. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the parents are kind of glad we're helping them, but they know they're stuck in their thing, which they're not. You know, it's the duplicity programming. Mm-hmm. So it's, we may get one or two people out. Some, if we're lucky, we'll get a brother and sister, but usually it's just a brother. I mean, or just just the woman, a young girl. Obviously, he's had a lot of programming going on there to, to make mm-hmm. him the way he is. If, if he had retired, <laughs> he, <laughs> he'd probably have to go through a whole lot of deprogramming and healing to live an ordinary civilian life. Yeah. So, um, programming is, it happens everywhere. And I, I guess we've all heard documented accounts of programming it in the military. We've heard... Like, you know, in the, in the 60s and 70s, there was um, exposés of the military deliberately mm-hmm. using LSD um, mm-hmm. on their guys. So, yeah, it's... it's yeah, in my travels with um, government mind control <laughs> and people I was working with and researching this DID and trying to know how to work with these people, I did come across in my travels um, an individual who worked with Joseph Mengdala, the angel of death in Auschwitz. Um, the military brought him over in a covert program to build a super soldier. And that, this individual was part of that program. She, she taught me how they did it. Um, and her, her information was backed up. And what she explained to me was Joseph Mengele was like, like her so-called father. She was an adopted or put up for adoption. And somehow the military got a hold of her for MKUltra. Mm-hmm. And she was put into the program. And on the weekend, she was given over to a satanic ritual abuse family that would keep the programming going of Joseph Mengele. Because they knew that the sat- Satanists would keep the programming going. Um, as I talked with her, I said, what do you, how do you think this program is advanced now? And she says, well, they can do it with drugs now. They don't need to do the programming. And I met somebody else who's backed up that story, too, that they were using a drug program as an adult to be forced into prostitution for the government. You know, and she was a – this person had no reason to be lying. And they weren't, didn't appear to be mentally disordered, you know. But they said the program's farther along now. They don't need to do this condition programming through the children. I guess you could say for Satan. Um, yes. As, as the times are, are going to become more evil. Yeah. Um, and we just got to keep pushing forward. Jesus Jesus has far more power than the enemy. I mean, this stuff sounds scary, mm-hmm. but that's what we learned too. You know, it's that the enemy can't do anything to stop Jesus. He could do some nasty, horrible, horrific stuff like we've seen. Mm-hmm. You know, but Jesus, like I said, the glory of God always comes through. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and you know, when mm-hmm. I haven't even tried to deliberately pray for them, but it, it's mm. kind of clear God just brought them across my path. Yep. Um, and as soon as we met, you know, that it'd be like the anointing of God would just come, and it was the, mm-hmm. the ministry, in actual fact, went so easily. It was, it was just like I can't describe it. The power of God was just so strong. And, yes. And, and I think I don't know, maybe because they've been through so much. And his, mm-hmm. his gentleness and his compassion was so strong that, um, yeah, the healing, I just thought it was really beautiful. To, uh, yes. I was really touched being in these situations with, with, with these people who feel the presence of God so, so strongly. It, it, it's amazing, too. Um, this stuff, it's, it's, a little, it's more beyond deliverance. And I, G, Jesus has to bring in this ministry. He brought me, I call I was drafted. I didn't volunteer. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much to it. Um, there's just to give you an idea. Like I said, these are most some amazing women. But like the, one of the newer young ladies we brought in from Illuminati, mm-hmm. like the third session we were dealing with Baal and Moloch that manifested. Mm-hmm. Um, and during the session, you have to know who you are in Christ. Because my intern I was working with, this demon was trying to possess us and attach to our face. This is level of spiritual warfare. 
And I'm sitting there just mocking this thing, like, really? You're going you're to try that and you know, you're going to try to possess me? But my intern never had that before, and I didn't step on that level. She wasn't understanding what's going on. Mm-hmm. So we had to have a chat afterwards, but she learned how protected we are. Mm-hmm. But this stuff is very real when you deal with it, and then you have to put the genie back in the bottle after an hour and a half of the session. That's why it takes training. You know, we, we, um, You let Jesus come into the session, and he deals with this nasty stuff, but you have to understand what's demonic and what's angelic. Um, what are our dominion? We have dominion over the demonic, not the angelic. It's a very powerful and interesting ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said you have to constantly be a student of the Bible of what it really says, and not what the popular books say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think as well, you know, it, because it, it is a kind of ministry you don't hear much about, that, that people can get a bit frightened or um, mm-hmm. focus on, you know, on the details of the particular cult mm-hmm. or or the mm-hmm. particular abuses, and it's more about, as in any any type of, of ministry, it's more about focusing on Jesus and his love and his compassion yes. and, and exactly his light it. and not being swayed by, by the darkness mm-hmm. and not being, um, you know, overly upset about it, um, but mm-hmm. focusing on, on him. And, yeah, so I've heard that, um, you know, people will say that, that there's, a, there's more patience and gentleness required in this ministry it's not just like simple deliverance um and i found this this interesting because sometimes survivors they're not fully healed yet they're in the process and sometimes they they maybe uh, go back to doing some kind of rituals maybe even you know killing an animal or or something Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. and and as ministers we have to realize that might sound shocking to us but this this has been this person's whole life and yes when we became a Christian, we didn't change overnight. You know, I've been a Christian right. for 20 years and I've still got um, That's right. yep. flaws and, and things I know God wants to deal with in me. So, you know, it's a process. So would you say that, that the, the, the patience um, and, and being non-judgmental is more perhaps important in this ministry than, say, deliverance ministry? Oh, yes. Um you touched a couple of topics I want to highlight here. Um, first of all, it's a sanctification process, like you said, but it's a very complex one. Mm-hmm. But Jesus walks them through it because there's multiple identities th- as he heals the soul. This is not mental illness. This is a fractured soul, mm-hmm. um, which is a good thing. Because people think, am I nuts or am I insane? No, you have a fractured soul and Jesus will repair it. Um, it does take a lot of time. Um, how long does it take? It takes however long it takes with Jesus in that part to be healed. Mm-hmm. There's no agenda. Um, some people hear rather quickly and some people we go in circles with mm-hmm. until they get healed. Mm-hmm. And it's just how Jesus is going to heal them. Mm-hmm. Um, the other point I was going to make too, um, yeah, deliverance ministry. If you suspect this is a SRA survivor and the way this comes about is because as you're doing deliverance, many times you have to use discernment. It's important to be in deliverance and use discernment to just not spout out this is the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of this, spirit of that. Those aren't discernment. You have to sense it in your body. Um, and as you do more deliverance, you'll, you, you let the Holy Spirit tell you what this is. You feel the pressure in your chest as it manifests, in your stomach, or in your head. You can feel it coming on, and the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, if you see a person in front of you, looks like a demon is violating them or hurting them, and you're not picking up anything into the discernment radar, this is why this is important. You may have an SRA person in front of you mm-hmm. because through deliverance, the, um, they're triggering – to be like going back in the ritual. So that as you think you're casting out a demon, you actually got a four-year-old girl stuck in a memory of being ritually abused with a knife being stuck in her or something, that, that grotesque. Mm-hmm. So you got to shut it down. Um, so sometimes deliverance is worse and it kicks up more junk. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of discernment involved. Mm-hmm. Like, like you mentioned too, the ministry is different. Uh, we call it um, ritual abuse prayer ministry, not deliverance ministry. We just let the c- compassion of Jesus Christ move through this person. Mm-hmm. And as he heals them, the demons are kicked out because this was violations. This was not sin. Mm-hmm. Some evil person did something to a two-year-old or a four-year-old or a fetus of a baby. They didn't sin. They weren't even told what happened when this was violated. So Jesus handles the removal of the demon in a lot gentler manner, which is very fascinating. It is. Um, yeah. I, I remember um, taking a, a woman that God brought to me um, to s- some friends who had, you know, they'd experienced helping people before in this particular avenue. And um, I was waiting outside, and she was in the room with them. And it was so, so quiet and so, so I didn't hear a thing. And I actually sat outside thinking, oh, no, she's not getting much deliverance when, in fact, she was. It was just, Mm -hmm. 
and she literally felt things leave her. Yeah. And she told me that later, but it was just so, so gentle. And, and mm -hmm. I think as well, sometimes we can get into a, um, perhaps like a, a, a sort of a method of, of doing, yes. doing ministry because it worked so many times before. <laughs> and so we yep. like to try and follow certain steps. I've certainly done that myself. And well, me too. Early on, yep, we all fell in that trap, <laughs> right? And then sometimes it, 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 each person is unique, and and it's not mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's, as you say, it's discernment, and and what does Jesus want to do now? Exactly. Um, yeah. And that, and that's the same with um even deliverance. I way I do it too now. Um, I don't show up my curse breaking par prayers anymore. I just interview them and see what's happening because a lot of times it could be I'm stumbling in California. I guess there's so much Satanism in California mm -hmm. in the 60s and 70s. I'm stumbling into the children, the survivors. Mm -hmm. So I don't even do deliverance right away. I listen to their story, what's going on, mm -hmm. discern it, and then I start, like I said, sometimes my, my biggest prayer right now is under my breath where they can't hear it mm -hmm. because it's something demonic that they'll, they'll, they'll just like leap out and go, you know, stop what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you heard that, huh? What'd I say? Mm -hmm. You know, I just say it so nobody else can hear it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is interesting. So it's just stuff like that. We have to be careful now. I, in any session, I make them prove to me it's demonic. I don't care what it is, if it's SRA or if it's deliverance because then you're more skeptic to understand how to help them as the story unfolds. Yes. I guess we're all different. I don't tend to feel um, things like that. And, and again, I, I suppose God uses us all mm -hmm. in, in different ways. But it is, it is interesting. Yeah, my son will smell just smell something really bad. His discernment's in his nose. Uh -huh. So like you said, you gotta you got to target how how God made you, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh. And so like he'll smell something really rank or like, let's go. And you smell that? You'll know. Go, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm feeling something too. So yeah. it's however discernment's built into you. Interesting. I think I've had that just once or twice, and it smells like rotten eggs or, or something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, mm -hmm. It's amazing how God will give it. But it's putrid to him. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, what would you say, you know, if, if there's someone someone listening, and uh, there's a Christian listening, and, and they, they feel God is leading them into this type of ministry, uh, do you have any advice for them? Um, yeah, start start getting mentoring or trained anywhere you can. Um, there's not a lot of information out there, but there's a lot of us out there trying to disseminate information. Mm -hmm. This is, like I said, this is different from deliverance. It's sort of in between deliverance and exorcism, and I think it leans sometimes more on exorcism when something shows up because we're dealing with the angelic beings like Luciferian angels or satanic angels more than demons. We're dealing with, um, so it, it, it's to get trained and to understand far beyond book training. Um, even if it's just you're, you're with a legit deliverance ministry where you start discerning stuff that comes in and comes out, that's a good start because you need discernment when you work with these people. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is to start um, understanding the, the, the counseling process for these people and how to bring in Jesus gently. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to evangelize parts without forcing Jesus down their throat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I just back off. I say, I'm going to let Jesus come. Oh, the only part, I don't want to talk to Jesus. Well, why not? You know? And so we'll have to resolve something so Jesus can come in. And it just takes time. A lot of patience. Um, we have to be very careful, too, that we don't bring these people into our homes. We know that, too. We're, we're actually looking for a house to build mm -hmm. to house these people. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the counselors many times can't leave in the same homes because these people have detachment issues. They want to look at, at me, the male, as their father, which I can't be a part of. So mm -hmm. I assign Jesus as the father. Or they're having detachment issues, they need a mom. So Jesus has to take over that role. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of dark things we have to work on healing that takes a long time. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful not to come and be their mommy or daddy because then the parts attach to them and the demonic attaches to them through that, to the, the counselor. Um, so there's a lot of stuff we have to be aware of. Um, it's just patience and compassion in these people. They come around. Um, they're going to go through a lot of darkness. Um, people take them in. I don't think really understand the darkness. Mm -hmm. It can be as intense as living with somebody that's possessed mm -hmm. because the night rituals are going on. And you have to have the compassion of Christ to deal with that as that happens at nighttime, too. So it's very intense. Um, but, yeah, if you're called to it, just start looking into it. I, I think there are places in the U.K. that may have it. Um, there's there's training over in um, Michigan. I know CARE. Um, I'm getting ready to crank out a book, too, right now. I'm very close to an ebook. book um, it's a, a field guide to deliverance ministry, um, ritual abuse, and exorcism. Where I start covering more of the topics, and I think I'm going to have to blow out that book into a book on ritual abuse alone, but it gets information about how these parts behave and how you deal with multiple personalities and who come up. 
Because if you have this person living in the house, they're going to have multiple personalities. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's going to be children. Mm-hmm. You're going to be dealing with two-year-olds or four-year-olds in a 30-year-old body. Mm-hmm. And it just switches in and out. Mm-hmm. And you'll have to learn how to understand and deal with that. So it's a multi-layer thing. Where do you house these people? Um, sometimes they're highly functional. They're married and they're living in their own home. But if you get a young woman like we're working with now who we get them out of the coven, we got to hu- usher them into a house somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, away from their family. And that's where we see a lot of the intensity with the families. It's very difficult to work with mm-hmm. and disrupts the family life. So it's got to be something you're called to to house them. Mm-hmm. I know over here in America, um, a deliverance minister named Angela Greening did something in a movie. I can't remember what the movie was called about how she said she brought one of these people in. It made it look very easy. And I think that was a very bad thing to do because mm-hmm. she misrepresented the darkness that happens to families. It's very destructive. You just have to be called by Jesus to handle us and bring them into your home. Um, but there are people out there who do that. We find them, and they work very successfully. But you have to understand the level you're getting into is Jesus heals these people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I was very fortunate that um, a lady who, who stayed with me for, for several days, she had already had um, healing and deliverance. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, by the time I had met her, um, it wasn't as as extreme as what you're saying, but, but yes, some right. things were happening in my home, obviously, um, and I have a family here, and, um, you know, even just simple things like the phone going, or yeah. strange no- demo- noise coming out the phone, or strange things happening with the electrical works, but yes, yep. sometimes in the night, um, when we were fast asleep, I would suddenly wake up and feel to go through and see her, and, and right enough, she was in there you know, being attacked mm-hmm. by, yes. by, by demons and the, and the Lord would wake me up through the night at the right time. That's what we're time. talking about, exactly. And yep. go in and, 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 and pray, uh, you know, to stop it. So, mm-hmm. yes, it's... Because it's, um, the, the nighttime occult royal parts will call demons, and you will have shadows in the house, you'll have other things. Yeah. So it takes a level of person, uh, and, they're, and they're maturing in Christ, mm-hmm. where it doesn't bother them. Um, because it can it, it can be like oppression if they allow it. It takes the right person that doesn't allow the oppression in their house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even at a basic level of uh, uh, you just suddenly feel like you're not in a very good mood. It mm-hmm. seems to come out of the blue. And, then and guess who brought that? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and they attack more. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's great that there are ministries out there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's many in the in the UK, or, or if there are, mm. they're, they're kind of a more hidden and under the radar, and, and they don't have mm. websites. I, I only have heard of a few um, that exist. There must be more, and I just don't know of them. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, because people do need to protect themselves, yep. and they feel they don't want to have a, a website, and that's understandable. Um, so, and you, you're sorry, what did you want to add? Also, um, well, we're, we're starting to do Skypes, too. I do Skypes pretty much around the world now mm-hmm. with some of these things. But like I said, it takes a very long time when you house these people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a magnitude of years for healing. Because remember, it, it happened all their life. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stuff. That, not only that, it's just the, the internal dysfunctional family itself, mm-hmm. those dynamics on top of this ritual abuse stuff. Um, it, just, it just takes time to learn. And we're an equipping ministry out here, too. We, when somebody has somebody like this, we work with them over Skype. I have people in different states who, who, who harbored a... You know, a survivor, and we work with them to train them because that's the answer we got to do. Mm-hmm. If if it happened, you're like we said, you're drafted into this. We got to get those people equipped and get them up to speed on what's happening and how to deal with this. Mm-hmm. So there there are ways to, like you said, the marvel of the internet now. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can be in Cambodia, I can be in China, or I could be in you know in the state next door. So it, it it's interesting we can do this. So there is help out there if somebody really needs help with that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're and they have a case going on right now. We're we're usually able to help them, mm-hmm. and we're also in the process of equipping now too. Oh, we're starting to look for churches that will host it. Um, out here in the Bay Area, we're having a very small one-hour thing at a Bay Area Sunday School conference. They're allowing us to teach us because the people are showing up in the churches now. Before it was too scary, but now it was, oh my gosh, let's get these people in. What do we do with them? Mm-hmm. That's kind of been what's happened to us. This is too scary for the church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't let those people talk. And then when something surfaces, bring them in and help us. You know, So it's, it's kind of like educating the church, too. This is out there, and we have to stand in our victory at the cross. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's what Jesus is about. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's a lot of churches that are just too scared to even go there. I've mm-hmm. always found that too in the UK. But it's funny with the internet because obviously there's good and bad there. But yes, because of, of, of um, 
information being spread so easily nowadays. You know, I sometimes e even meet non-Christians who will, will talk away about uh, the Illuminati or SRA. They seem to mm -hmm. know more about it than um, a lot of Christians. And I yep. think it's just because they, they've obviously got a bit of an interest and they just watch YouTube videos. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it makes you think, well, there must be other Christians who are now uh, learning this is a reality simply because of, of um, YouTube videos and the likes. Uh, God is using it to open people's eyes and, and waking people up. Absolutely. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot, too. I think over here in California, we're starting to see more also. I think the Satanism was big in the 70s with the you know the, the drug culture and stuff. So we're starting to see the um, children as adults now mm -hmm. pop up everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there's like a lot more ministries starting to show up here in California. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in Michigan and whatever the little spots were that were satanic um, activities going on. So yeah, I think we're starting to see it and we're starting to publish some good material. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to weed out what the bad material is too because some people are taking a, an assumption that this is how you do it. It's not deliverance anymore. Because it actually hurts the person. That's not what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We want to heal the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus just comes alongside and he does. And there's a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. Mm -hmm. these, these people in parts to get healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just great that there are, there are ministries out, out there who, who, who do specialize in this. And, and, and I wish there was more, as you say, more houses. Would you call it a safe house? What would you call it? I, I guess... Uh, I would call it probably a safe house. Um, I, I know that we have the, the care has one in Michigan, but it's very hard to get into too. You got to apply to get into it. Mm -hmm. You know, all the dynamics got to be right to get into it. Um, I said, we're trying to start one out here too, but it's like hard to get the church interest, you know, <laughs> to help us out with it. Um, but that is our goal right now is to build a safe house out here for the people we work with. Yes. And like I said, so our, 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 I said, our counseling booming now too. Um, we had a little two room, counseling office we just moved in this weekend to a larger one because of it and we have a community of women that's growing as well as we help them so it's starting to get more interest and we're hoping through this we can get more of the message out to maybe more training material um rest restoration in christ ministries is one of the places right now that has full training material on ritual abuse it's really good i recommend them um care in michigan also has training material on did sra which is good and we're starting to get our stuff out too and looking at three different perspectives but we kind of all gleaned off each other mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. and i think we have three different approaches but they're all jesus based yes. um it's just because the holy spirit has to lead you even though you read all this material mm -hmm. it's fine and all but once you get in the counseling session like it's it's you and jesus in the part and whatever comes up mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that jesus got to do it he does all the work is unique and mm -hmm. yep. gosh, it, we might think well, um, you know I should perhaps pray about this thing for the person and that's not what Jesus wants at that moment in time at all he's got something right. totally different that, that needs dealt with that, that he is mm -hmm. um, bringing up so yeah and you don't need an understanding. Like a lot of people come in uh, with ritual abuse, and we talk about a system. The system is the conglomerate of all the personalities or all the identities, and everybody wants to understand how the system works, and we'll go on and do this. I, I worked with a lot of women who are nearly healed completely through years. Mm -hmm. I never really paid attention to how the system worked. I paid attention to what Jesus was doing yeah. because I, I call it like that game of Jenga where you pull the sticks out. Mm -hmm. and the tower collapses. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like watching Jesus, what he does. And we've seen a lot more healings than um, therapists through this because he'll go somewhere that may be booby-trapped, that the part can't get out and respond to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He'll go over here and he'll go to the bottom part of the sticks, the middle part of the sticks, and maybe go into something weird for a month, a month and a half, maybe six months, and all of a sudden that portion of the system collapses. It's like, boom. you know. And it's like we're just thinking, like, and the whole time we're just following Jesus around, going, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. you know? And he brings, up, he brings up the parts. We don't call him up. We'll say, you know, True Jesus, take us to a part you want to minister to with today, and we just like rest there, mm -hmm. and he'll go bring up the part he wants to work with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times a, a cult loyal person goes, oh, you fools, you brought me up. Now I'm going to ruin everything. I go, I hate to tell you, not being me here, but you're a guest of the Holy Spirit right now. And they'll say, no, I'm not. You know, over a period of a week or two weeks, that part will get healed because it was targeted, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that gave us a doorway to go through to get to other parts. Mm -hmm. So you just have to relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not the people that heal them. And just, just pray and let, watch Jesus as he heals a part and work with that part with the compassion he, he brings. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's worth um, sharing with our listeners that, that there's a good prayer pointer. You know, pray for more ministries like this mm -hmm. um, and pray for more safe houses um, to be built because really, I mean, ideally, it, it would be wonderful if every 
church or at least every town um, mm. in the world had a safe house because it is, yeah. it is needed and um, yeah. Um, Amen. Into that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you, so if there is someone, a Christian listen now who does feel led or feels, really feels God is leading them into this ministry, could you perhaps pray with them just now? Yes. We just ask you, and I'm going to kind of mix in some prayers how we work it. <laughs> I keep using the true Lord Jesus. That's just my ministry. Mm-hmm. And so every time I pray now, it's always true Lord Jesus. So it, people go, what are you talking about? There's only one Jesus. I go, I know. <laughs> but like you said, there's a false Jesus in the occult. So we always kick him out of this session. Mm-hmm. So true Lord Jesus, who came in the flood over 2,000 years ago, was born immaculate conception to the Virgin Mary, led a sinless holy life, and drank from the cup of his father and went to the cross for mankind's sins and was the only true atonement for mankind's sins. And you died and you're raised again three days and conquered death through the power of the resurrection of the Holy Spirit. It's you and you alone. We, we talk to you today and we call the true spirit. And that's how we identify a true Jesus Christ, true Jesus. And we ask you now if there's other people out there listening, they're being called to this. We just ask you to release them into it. Let them pray and be released into it. Because we know, God, you, you, go out and you, you pick the people who are ready or you want to train. And just give them encounters where this starts opening up. We know that's just how you work. You start giving these people seasons they go through of, of training. And if they're praying into this, Jesus, I ask you to open up their seasons where you send the people. Maybe like, what's going on here? Or what is it supposed to be? A lot of times they just got to understand it's training mode. You're being trained. You don't have to completely understand it. But just work with the people that the Holy Spirit sent you. Um, and that's how God trains like, through the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, release the people you need to be trained. And just release the people who are going to be the equippers and release the people who are going to be into this ministry and just ask for supernatural connection too. There may be people in the UK we don't know about who are actually there mm-hmm. and are ready to rise up and work with this. Just let them sprout up too and make this connection. We all network now. Like I said, there's an internet here. We can all connect. We can all work together. We can all train each other, Lord. And if there's somebody out there, I just want to speak into them right now. You know, just work on uh, who you are in Christ that – through Jesus, anything's possible, and the darkness doesn't stand a chance. No matter what shows up in your house, through the authority of Jesus Christ, you can make it leave. There's no more a matter of fear. It's who you are in Jesus, and he's the one that brings healing. These individuals, no matter what the darkness they went through, that there's not enough power in hell <laughs> to go against Jesus Christ. And we just thank you, Jesus, that you're healing these people and you're walking them out. And all the glory goes to you. And a lot of times the sanctification is, is just a supernatural revelation of your glory, of things that are hopelessness. That's the lie of the enemy. We send it back to hell where it came from because there is no hopelessness for you. You can throw this thing around, turn it around. You bring hope to these people. And I just standing, I want whoever is praying for this right now to stand on the shoulders of what we've accomplished and take it and run with it that like we've had people are being healed now and becoming interns and helping and i just want to spread that to whoever's learning this wants to be a part of this that this this thing of the enemy this church the enemy can be brought down and these slaves can be set free through the power of jesus christ and we thank you jesus for that in your precious name amen thank you jesus yeah Mm. Mm. could you know at, at the end, I'll ask you to give your website, but could you now pray there may be people listening who have been affected by, by these things. Could you now please pray for them? Oh, yes. Thank you. So, true Lord Jesus, who we established in your earlier prayer, I just want you to go out and minister to these people right now. They may have some sort of Christian host presenter up right now. And if that's the case, I just want you to speak to them and let them know there's help. And if there's a part behind him that's calling him stupid and there's no hope for that, know that I just want to have true Jesus go meet that part right now and minister to it, that there is a way out. There's a way to shut down the duplicity and there's a way to shut down the programming. And just, just the Christian host has it right. And if you're not a Christian host and you're just listening right now and you're from the occult or maybe you're an atheist because of it now, that's okay too. But there is a God out there, a true God, and it's the one Satan was mocking He's real. True Jesus is real. And he has a way to heal this. And it takes time. It takes effort. And it's your investment in time and effort that, that brings the healing and smashes that walls of hopelessness. I know the circles of hopelessness. That's witchcraft. And that's, that's, that's what the enemy wants you to believe, but it's not true. And there, there is a way now. There is a way out. It's frustrating. 
But all those little voices, guys, I want to talk to you guys who are out there who are worried about integration. We've heard this horrible word called integration, which you guys think is disintegration. You guys don't disappear. You guys are a fractured soul. And you guys all get put back together into one, and you're still there. You're all still there, but you're functioning as a true God designed you in the womb. And as they designed you for the foundations of, of the earth he would lay before them, there was another purpose for you, and it wasn't to be fractured like this. And there is a, a Jesus who loves you, and he will heal you. And I just pray for you guys who are listening right now that, yeah, this, consider it. Maybe just try connecting with Jesus, even if the, the back of your mind's fighting you. No, no, don't talk to him. There's a true Jesus out there, the Lion of Judah, and he wants to help you, and he will. And I just want you guys to think about that in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's um, m16ministries.com is a website to contact me. But there's also a lot of information out there on m16ministries.blogspot.com where I keep a blog. Um, it's not well written because a lot of times i got to hammer stuff out and get it out there, but I disseminate a lot of information out there. And I think there are some videos out there about dissociative identity disorder on that blog. Um, as well as other stuff was we were doing in Cambodia. I'm trying to get back out there. I'm working with human trafficking as well um, because the same thing. We've seen mind control and we've seen um, stuff of these children, dissociation. So um, there's also a field guide to spiritualwarfare.blogspot.com that covers other stuff too. So I'm kind of all over the map there. Um, but that's, that's where I disseminate information um, as well as a field guide to spiritual warfare um, is my book. Um, so we try to get as much information out as we can, but there's videos mm-hmm. on uh, 16ministries.blogspot.com about um, occult survivors. And um, the other woman I work with, Tony Tegan, at our counseling office, uh, one of our seminars we did last year is on all of all the videos are on there on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. And, and obviously my blog, ourspiritualquest.com, I will add Michael's details to that. And I'm trying to add various deliverance ministries' details to that. I, I don't specialize in, in any of this myself. I'm just mm. more like a point of contact. People tend to contact me from around the world and I refer them on to folks, mm. like, folks like yourself. Um, but that's us run out of time. Now, yes. Michael, and I'm so, so, so grateful for you to, to come on here and, and share today. I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much and God bless you. God bless you too. Bye-bye. Bye. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.